Hi everybody. On 8th of February 2024, the Congress party released something called the black paper on the Modi government. Aaj desh pichle 10 saal mein samruddhi ke naye naye shikhar sar kar usko nazar nahi aa raha hai. Isliye kala tikka karne ka prayas hua hai. India's main opposition party, Congress, has brought out what it termed as a black paper on the 10 years of the ruling party's governance. कांग्रेस चीफ मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे रिलीज द ब्लैक पेपर दिस मॉर्निंग एंड टारगेटेड द सेंटर वो हमेशा अपनी बात को पार्लियामेंट में जब रखते हैं तो बार बार अपनी कामयाबियों को सुनाते हैं और उनके फेल्यूअर्स को छुपाते हैं यस यू हर्ड इट राइट दे रिलीज्ड अ 54 पेज डॉक्यूमेंट टू एजुकेट द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया अबाउट व्हाट ऑल डू द मोदी गवर्नमेंट डू रॉन्ग एंड व्हाट एट्रोसिटीज डिड दे कमिट व्हाइल गवर्निंग द कंट्री इन द पास्ट 10 इयर्स एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट इज दैट दे हैव मेड दीस आर्ग्युमेंट्स विद अ लॉट ऑफ डेटा So now we have two schools of thoughts. On one side while the white people talked about how India is developing and progressing very fast under the Modi government, the black paper shockingly presents a totally opposite viewpoint and they put out a direct attack on the Modi government. While Modi ji calls the current period as the Amrit Kal of India, the Congress has called it the Anyay Kal as in the time of injustice. Bhai yo bhai no. Hum log aajadi ke Amrit Kal mein Black paper claims the 10 years of Modi rule were a period of injustice. Kharge tried to corner the center over rising inflation and unemployment in the country. And while most people will ignore it as just dirty political fights, as citizens of the country, you should be very happy about these arguments because these are data-based arguments. and this will help you understand the difference between the bjp's perspective and the congress perspective eventually it will make the debate of bjp versus congress even more interesting eventually as voters of the country it will help you understand the governance of your country better but while most media houses have only covered the white paper and praised the modi government for its work we at think school wanted to show you the other side of the picture as well so in this case study let me take you deep into the black paper to help you understand on what grounds does the black paper blame the current government for bad governance what does the black paper have to say about the current state of the indian economy and most importantly which document presents the ultimate truth the white paper by the modi government or the black paper by the congress Before we move on let me tell you about an interesting survey by HP which talks about AI being a solution to workplace burnout This survey says that 75% of the leaders predict jobs will become easier with AI and 55% people think AI opens up more opportunities So if you're someone who wants to learn AI for free check out Growth School's 3 hour workshop on AI and ChatGPT It's being held this week and is hosted by my dear friend Webov Sisinthi Usually it's a paid workshop but especially for Think School viewers it is absolutely Absolutely free. The best part is the first thousand people who register for it will get a bonus worth five thousand rupees, which includes a list of fifty plus epic AI tools of 2024 and the prompt bible with two hundred plus prompts. These prompts will change the way you work in your profession. And more than one million people across the globe, along with me and my team, have taken this workshop and they have derived an insane amount of value from it. In fact, they have created their own personal AI assistant that can do almost all tasks ten x faster and with 10x precision so whether you are a tech or non tech professional in sales marketing hr operations or even a founder or freelancer this will be extremely useful for you i have left the link in the description so go and check it out chalo let's start from the basics out of this 54 page document just like last time we have picked some of the most important points that congress has used to expose the bjp government and you can read the entire document from our study material section in the description now if you've seen the white paper episode the white paper basically picked the most important indicators and declared that the indian economy is doing insanely well as compared to the congress era and it was pretty convincing as well but you know what guys The black paper points out a very important indicator that the white paper completely missed on and that is the unemployment rate in India. So this begs the question, have we really done so badly in our unemployment markers? Well, unfortunately, the data says that we have done a terrible job here. And this is specially because the prime minister promised to create 2 crore jobs every single year. Mere naujawano क्या मेरिट के आधार पर नौकरी मिलनी चाहिए कि नहीं मिलनी चाहिए आपकी ताकत के हिसाब से आपको काम मिलना चाहिए कि नहीं मिलना चाहिए अवर एम इज टू क्रिएट जॉब फॉर मोर देन अ बिलियन यंग 
According to the black paper, let alone creating 2 crore jobs, unemployment is at the highest in the past 45 years. And shockingly, the black paper says that the situation is so so bad that 2 unemployed people die by suicide every single hour. Mumbai ke pawai ilake mein 24 saal ke ek MBA ke chhatr ne berozgari ke chalte atmahatya kar di. Two sisters who committed suicide and they used their father's license revolver. That's because it's believed that they were extremely upset as they did not, you know, receive any job. According to the black paper, the total unemployment for all ages in 2012 was 1 crore people, which has now increased to 4 crores in 2022. And furthermore, they also point out that the youth unemployment has doubled from 6% in 2011-12 to 15% in 2019 20 Now some people might say, bro, all of this is because of COVID and this is a 4-year-old data. So you know what? We cross-checked all of our sources and our data says that in 2013, the unemployment rate was 5.42%. In 2019, it was 5.27%. And in 2023, it stood at 8.03%. So regardless of how you measure it and when you measure it, we have to admit that things are bad with our employment status. And you know what? The black paper doesn't stop here. The black paper also points out that 10.34 crore people under the age of 30 were in the workforce in 2016-17. But by the end of 2022-23, the number had fallen to just 7 crore people under the age of 30 in the workforce. And to make it worse, about one third of all our graduates and postgraduates are unemployed. So long story short, the black paper points out that there is rampant unemployment in the country. This is the state of employment in the country. And you know what guys, the congress further goes on to say that the government has not only failed in creating jobs, but it has also caused problems to the existing jobs as well. Now why does congress say this? Between 2014 and 15 and 2022 and 23, real wages rose by just 0.8% in the agricultural sector, 0.2% in the non-agricultural sector and it was negative for the construction sector. So over the period of 8 years, while the rich have gotten richer in India, the poor in India seem to be struggling. So here's the message that I want to put out humbly to all the BJP leaders. Guys, you have hands down done a great job in controlling the economy, bringing down the fiscal deficit, increasing the FDI and increasing the forex reserves. But what are we doing about jobs today? We need to bring in more manufacturing units, we need to bring in more FDI into manufacturing and only then we can create these jobs. So my question is, what are we doing to create more jobs in the economy and protect the bottom of the pyramid? If this is clear to you, let's come to the second point in the black paper. Guys, if you remember, the white paper spoke about how the fiscal deficit has decreased with the increasing revenue from sources like taxes and responsible expenditure done by the government. But here's where the black paper accuses the government of something called tax terrorism. In simple words, this means that small and middle class are being taxed heavily by the government to increase their revenue. Now, the point to be noted over here is that terrorism is an exaggerated word for this, but then there is actually a story that is worth addressing. In 2021-22, out of the 14.83 lakh crores in GST collected, the Congress says that 64% of this revenue was obtained from the bottom 50% of the population, 33% of this revenue was obtained from the middle 40% and just 3% of this number was obtained from the top 10% of the population. Now there are two things to note over here guys and if the Congress leaders are watching this, please listen to this very carefully. By the look of these stats, it almost looks like the BJP is doing a great job because the tax is coming from all segments of the society. And you're clearly saying that the rich in the country only pay 3% of the GST. And this to most people will look like India's consumption class is 50% of the population. And to the viewers, I got to tell you that the big problem over here is the income divide in India. So here's another chart to actually state the depth of this problem. If you look at this chart, only 5% of the population in India files for taxes. Only 1.5% of them pay taxes. And this is absolutely terrible because these markers are at 10% for China and 43% for the United States. And what's even worse is that just 0.3% of Indians contribute 80% of the tax collected in India. So this says that there is a huge income gap between the rich and the poor. 
and technically if you see the poor in india does not pay income tax at all which means they don't even have an income worth 7 lakh rupees and this number is as big as 1.2 billion people this is the actual problem so if taxes are coming from all classes of people it's actually great because it says that the bottom of the pyramid is consuming more than the rich but if you look at the income tax data it actually points out how much income do the poor people in india actually have if this is very very clear to you let's come to the second point that the congress points out which is the implementation of gst you see while the aim of gst was to simplify taxes in india congress says that it actually made matters worse for the businesses in india gst rules have been amended more than 900 times in the last 6 years and between 2017 to 2022 the black paper accuses the modi government of changing rules every other day with 907 notifications 195 circulars 23 instructions and 19 orders all of this supposedly makes small businesses suffer a lot guys a quick note on this we actually couldn't find a relevant source to cross check this information so what i did is i conducted a small survey with the msme community of quantum leap which is rajiv talreja's company where he has trained thousands of msme owners and he has helped them out with their business now in this community 90% of the business owners said that gst actually made their life better whereas 10% of them said that gst made their life worse so now i want to leave it up to you guys if you are a business owner if you belong to the msme community drop a comment below and let me know whether gst made your life better or worse and one point to note over here is that we want to segregate your comment from all the bots that are very active right now because of the election season so tell me if gst made your life better or not along with the reason so if it made your life better say yes and drop a reason so that we can understand that it's a genuine comment and it is not coming from a bot if this is clear let's move on with the episode so yes it is true that gst did hurt people in the short run and i believe that is what happens when every major economic policy is executed but most people that i spoke to told me that gst did not make their life difficult except for the fact that uh, they had to spend some extra money on a ca thirdly the black paper points out something very critical about the manufacturing and exports of india you see the bjp had promised that india will compete with china who was and still is the godfather in manufacturing in the year 2023 india would grow faster than china when i first visited the us as a prime minister india was the 10th largest economy in the world today india is the fifth largest economy but with current levels at about 7% growing just a bit faster is all it needs to surpass china but the question over here is did it really turn india into a revolutionary manufacturing hub of the world well not really because if you look at the modi government's target they said that manufacturing must be 25% of our gdp but you know what the share of manufacturing in india's gdp has actually fallen from 16% in 2015 to 13% in 2022 So let alone 25%, we have a dangerous backlog that we now have to recover from. And this is something that we pointed out even in the BJP report card episode. So these numbers raise some serious questions about the Make in India initiative in India. Now the question we hear is why are we falling short in this initiative? Because this was supposed to be a revolutionary initiative, right? Well, two reasons. Number one, ease of doing business in India isn't easy enough. And number two, land acquisition is a big, big big problem and unless we fix it we cannot grow as fast as china if this is clear to you let's move to the fourth point that the black paper points out which are social indicators now if you remember from our white paper episode it spoke about how the government has increased capex spending and how it is not wasting money on welfare schemes so while it is good that the capex has increased it is important to know that in certain places money needs to be spent on welfare schemes and from the look of these stats it looks like the bjp government is not spending enough on welfare schemes they might be doing a lot but that may be not enough and you know what we found out guys for some schemes the benefits did not reach the right people and for some schemes even when the money was allocated it was not spent fully for example for the schemes that were introduced for the farmers like the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana the insurance scheme has not even reached 50% of its targeted farmers similarly if you look at women centric social schemes like nirbhaya 12000 crores worth of projects were approved but till 2023 just 2521 crores were utilized so the black paper says that it is great to spend on capex but when you have money allocated for welfare when you have people who need welfare why don't we spend this money and help the poor this is the fourth argument that the black paper made 
and this brings us to the fifth point which is something very very scary the black paper argues that democracy in india is weakening now how do they say that the black paper implies that the government is misusing investigative agencies like ed and cbi to raid the opposition leaders while the congress says that only 54% of the investigations were carried out against their opposition when they were in power during the time of the bjp 95% of these investigations were carried out on the opposition only the bjp government wants to destroy the democracy in this country agar cbi apna kaam karti ed apna kaam karti to ye nahi hota तो उनको ये भी सोचना चाहिए कि किसी ना किसी दिन बीजेपी की सरकार बदलेगी अमित शाह जैसे क्योंकि उसके पास ईडी है ईडी इज हिज वेपन सीबीआई उनके पास ही है इनकम टैक्स उनके पास प्रिटी मच एनी बडी हु गोज टू द बीजेपी गोज देयर बिकॉज ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ प्रेशर प्रेशर फ्रॉम द सीबीआई प्रेशर फ्रॉम द ईडी प्रेशर फ्रॉम केसेस नाउ सम पीपल माइट से ब्रो दैट इज बिकॉज ओनली द ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स आर करप्ट बीजेपी लीडर्स आर नॉट करप्ट Well although I want to believe it the patterns kind of make it hard to believe now I'm not saying this because I've got something very concrete just look at the patterns and even Indian Express has recently published a chart of about 25 opposition leaders who had cases against them but after that they joined the BJP and 23 of them saw their cases drop now I don't have anything concrete to actually point out like I said in the electoral bonds episode these could be isolated events also these could be correlated events also but somehow they seem to be extremely worrisome and it would be great if a government leader can actually point out or explain to the people of india what exactly is happening in fact if you want to know more about this argument my friend mohak mangal has covered this extensively in his channel i'll attach the link to his video in the description now the point to be noted over here is that i have certain disagreements with mohak mohak has certain disagreements with me but this video of mohak actually points out something that is very factual and is very evidently problematic so do have a look at it and let me know what you think If this is clear to you let's move on to the last point that the white paper points out which is the defense and security problem in India if you don't know what happened in Manipur 35000 people have been displaced in Manipur 1700 houses have been burned 60 people have lost their lives and 200 more have been injured since the violence broke out in May 2023 in Manipur and in the night Manipur is burning for months now My question pertains to the ongoing situation in Manipur. The fight goes on in broad daylight. Many want to end the fighting. These Meitei are marching for peace. So while the BJP has done a great job in Kashmir, the question is why couldn't we act quickly on Manipur even though it had the BJP government both at the state and the center? Now while most people might say bro you know that happened in Manipur but my state is doing just fine I got to tell you that this is a system issue guys because if one state is burning and the center did not do anything tomorrow what makes you believe that something might happen to your state and the center will actually take some strict action because it was an entire state burning and it was the life of what 35000 people which is even today at stake this is the reason why we as citizens of the country we need to point out and voice our opinions so that the government understands that the people of india are watching These are the most compelling arguments that have been made in the black paper and apart from these arguments there are several other arguments like demonetization farmer income and the chinese border problem that the black paper points out so if you want to read these arguments i'll attach the link to the black paper in the study materials in the description so the ultimate question over here is who is right and who is wrong well here's where we as citizens we need to understand that both parties have done good things and both parties have done bad things but if you look at the mainstream media in india While one section of the media only applauds the government the other section only says bad things about the government and the result of this bipolar reporting is a bipolar population so while some people might call modi the greatest prime minister india has ever had the other might call him a dictator and both are stupid statements because what we need to do is decode the governance of every government and point out both the good things and question the shortfalls of each government so that the citizens can understand both sides of the argument instead of being influenced by one sided propaganda this is the reason why we covered the most compelling arguments of both the black paper and the white paper and i just hope you learned something valuable from this case study that's all from my side for today guys please do find the black paper attached in the description if you learned something valuable please make sure to hit the like button in order to make youtube aba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out grow schools ai workshop from the link in the description because only the first 1000 people who register from the link will get the free bonus thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye